Mercedes Monet isn't expected back in WWE, according to a new report. Fightful Select reported that talks between WWE and the former Sasha Banks have fallen through. WWE sources told Fightful on Friday night that the two sides were no longer in negotiations regarding a return. The back and forth talks between the two, while friendly, ultimately failed to progress and WWE's side walked as a result of the stalemate. Fightful also said that another source in WWE believed that Monet would be appearing elsewhere imminently. Prior to her ankle injury, Mercedes had made appearances with New Japan Pro Wrestling, winning the IWGP Women's Championship. She also appeared in the crowd for AEW's All In event at Wembley Stadium back in August, but nothing progressed further between Monet and AEW. Monet's career with WWE abruptly came to an end back in May of 2022, when creative differences drove her and Trinity to walk out prior to an episode of Raw. The two ended up being suspended indefinitely and were stripped of the women's tag team titles. Trinity has since signed with Impact Wrestling. Monet spent 2023 making appearances in New Japan Pro Wrestling until sustaining an ankle injury in May during a match against Willow Nightingale. In an article published for the Players' Tribune today, MJF addressed MJF fatigue. The AEW World Champions article covers a variety of topics, including Saturday's pay-per-view, the five-year history of AEW, and more. Near the end of the piece, he commented on fans being a little burned out with his character at the moment. Writing, I know our fans are a little tired of this run I've been on, and for the first time since this company started, I know there's some MJF fatigue. Which is fine, by the way. No one stays hot forever. He continued to say that he sometimes wonders if standing up to anti-Semitism has made him a less popular wrestler in 2023. Writing, I wonder if being a proud Jew like I am in 2023 has actually made me less popular as a wrestler. And if deep down when someone says they have MJF fatigue, what they really mean is enough with the Jewish stuff already. I honestly don't know the answer to that. He continued to say, I don't support people, any people dying because of hate. I'll tell you what I do support and what I definitely am. I am anti-hate. I am sick to my stomach that people are calling for the death of Jews over something that's happening on the other side of the world. And I'm sick that Hamas, a literal terrorist organization, has fans on this side of the world. He then went on to say that on a daily basis, he is having to read anti-Semitic stuff from all different types of people, including celebrities, strangers, and even people he knows. Writing, it's just very sad. We're all human, man. We all deserve rights. We all deserve freedom. We all deserve happiness and respect. MJF is defending the AEW World Championship against Samoa Joe, and it will headline Saturday's World's End pay-per-view. The show takes place from the Nassau Coliseum in Uniondale, New York. And speaking of World's End, the Continental Classic Finals are set. Eddie Kingston and John Moxley will meet after winning their league finals on Wednesday's Dynamite. Moxley was the first to advance, winning the Gold League by defeating Jay White and Swerve Strickland in a three-way match. Later in the show, Eddie Kingston won the Blue League by defeating Brian Danielson. The winner of the Continental Classic will win a new Triple Crown Championship consisting of the Ring of Honor World Championship, the New Japan Strong Openweight title, and a new championship called the AEW Continental Championship. The updated card for AEW World's End on December 30th includes the AEW World Championship championship match MJF against Samoa Joe, the AEW Women's Championship Tony Storm defending against Riho, the TNT Championship in a no DQ match with Christian Cage defending against Adam Copeland, the AEW Continental Classic Finals Eddie Kingston versus John Moxley, the TBS Championship Julia Hart defending against Abaddon, Swerve Strickland versus Keith Lee, Andrade El Idolo versus Miro, Sting, Darby, Sammy Guevara, and Chris Jericho all teaming up to take on Big Bill, Ricky Starks, Powerhouse Hobbs, and Kyle Fletcher. There's also going to be an eight-man tag team match with the Blackpool Combat Clubs, Claudio Castagnoli and Brian Danielson, Mark Briscoe, and Daniel Garcia taking on Brody King, Jay White, Jay Lethal, and Roosh. 
plus the Zero Hour matches, which will be Hook defending his FTW Championship against Wheeler Yuta, and a 20-man Battle Royale for the TNT title match anywhere, anytime. And ahead of the show, I spoke with Claudio Castagnoli, who had this to say about his upcoming match at World's End. You're definitely going to be at AEW World's End in a very cool match, eight-man tag team match. Uh, of course, yourself, Brian Danielson, Mark Briscoe, Daniel Garcia, uh, taking on Brody King, Jay White, Jay Lethal, and Bruce. Oh boy, I'm yes. stoked for this. I'm looking at this and I'm like, oh, this is going to be fun. A mix of styles. Uh, yeah. I'm curious to see what this is going to look like. Uh, tell us about your thoughts heading into this match and, and how you felt when this matchup was announced. Um, it, it was it was fun because uh, we were kind of talking on um, like after the Canelo Classic and the Saturday, we were like, oh, you know, it would be sweet if because like, I think, um, you know, just that you know, obviously there's the semi-final and the final, and it was like, oh, and just like a hodgepodge of everybody else just in a fun multiple man match. And then it got announced and I was like, oh, this is this is awesome because um, it's just kind of a continuation of the Continental Classic or the C2 as the, as the kids call it, right? Um, <laughs> I'm old, <laughs> I say the kids. Um, I, just, I just pick up a little bit of lingo here and there and then I try to seem cool. Um, but yeah, um, I'm extremely excited because again, there's there's people that I haven't been in the ring with, with um, you know, like Jay White and Rouge. So it's, it, I mean, what the fans can expect is just fun. <laughs> it's gonna yes. be. I'm gonna have a blast because I'm also teaming up with Brian, who always has something up his sleeve. Um, whenever he gets that mischievous look of his on his face, I'm like, all right. Some more AEW news. Sean Spears is no longer with the company. The 42-year-old revealed the news via social media, writing that the departure was his decision. He thanked the organization and fans for five years of growth and personal development. Spears hadn't wrestled for AEW since the over-budget charity battle royale on the All Out kickoff show in September. Prior to that, his last match was in July when he lost a TNT title belt to Luchasaurus at Battle of the Belts in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. Sean Spears and his wife Cassie Lee announced on Sunday that they are expecting their second child. And now switching over to some WWE news. The finals for the men's breakout tournament is set for next week. Oba Femi will face Riley Osborne in the finals of the tournament that will take place at next week's New Year's Evil. Thursday was a special night for Sami Zayn. In his hometown in Laval, Quebec, Canada, Sami Zayn teamed up with his best friend Kevin Owens to defeat Judgment Day's Finn Balor and Dominic Mysterio. It started as a singles match between Zayn and Finn before ending in a DQ. Owens then made a surprise appearance at the show and helped Zayn Zayn even out the odds. But that wasn't what made the show so special for Sammy. What truly made it an unforgettable experience is that Sammy Zayn's son got to see him wrestle for the very first time. While speaking to the crowd after the match, Sami Zayn said that this was even more special than the Elimination Chamber in Montreal, where he challenged Roman Reigns for the undisputed WWE Universal Championship. Take a look at what he had to say. <laughs> Every single time I come, I think, man, that was special. There's no way next time will be quite as special. And guess what? Next time is even more special. And I've said this over and over and over for 10 years. And after Elimination Chamber in Montreal,
Zane, I'm just Baba, and this young man right here has never seen me wrestle. He knows nothing about what I do. Tonight is the first time ever that he sees me in this ring. Additionally, WWE has reportedly re-signed another member of its roster. Zelina Vega recently agreed to a new multi-year agreement with the company, according to PW Insider. Terms and length of the deal have not yet been disclosed. Zelina Vega, who turned 33 yesterday, first signed with WWE in 2017 after having made several appearances in NXT dating back to 2014. One of Japan's top wrestlers is likely WWE bound. In the new edition of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter, Dave Meltzer reports that Julia is likely coming to WWE in 2024. Her contract with stardom is set to expire in March. Dave noted that Julia might not come into WWE right away, but she's leaning toward joining the promotion. Julia is the current New Japan Strong Openweight Champion. In the 2022 Wrestling Observer Newsletter Awards, Julia finished in ninth place for Wrestler of the Year. She was in the top five for Japanese MVP, Women's Wrestling MVP, and Most Charismatic. Dave Meltzer previously reported that AEW had never made a serious play for Julia, and she wasn't in conversation with them. Meltzer wrote that Julia wasn't considering AEW. Her two options were signing with WWE or staying in Japan. Meltzer also reported in the Wrestling Observer Newsletter that WWE is interested in working with stardom. Writing, besides the new deal working with All Japan, WWE has also expressed interest in working with stardom. Nothing is finalized that we know of regarding that, but WWE is confirmed interested. Additionally, I spoke to Mace and Mansoor, who were released from WWE back in September. Here's what they had to say about that. You know, you uh, recently became a free agent and now you're out there getting all of these bookies. You're going to be at GCW, which is very exciting. Um, you were a Deadlock Pro not like a couple days ago. And so now, like, how are you getting back into the groove of things with, you know, getting bookings and really being on this your term, your schedule type of basis? First of all, I want to thank you for the very kind way of putting that I got released. <laughs> I became hey man, a free agent. That's a very good way. That's what I'm going to tell my uncle when he's like, what happened to your job? Why aren't you in WWE? How come I can't see you on TV anymore? Oh, I became a free agent. You don't understand. <laughs> hey, it's, it's, it, it gives you more freedom, man. No, no, it no, gives listen. you more freedom. And I can joke about it because I'm not like bitter about it. It, it. it doesn't like, it did bother me, believe me, but 90 days is a long time. And at a certain point you're in bed and you're trying to go to sleep. And all you can think about is what did I do wrong? What could I have done better? And at some point you're like, I can't live like this. I got to just try and make the most of it and make the best of it. And that's exactly when it turned on for me. Like um, probably a month after I got let go, I was like, you know what? I'm going to reach out to every single person I know. I'm going to I'm gonna be DMing, I'm going to be emailing, I'm going to be texting, I'm going to be calling. I'm going to make this happen. I was intent. I think the thing that I emphasize more than anything else about this process where um, I'm going on the independence and I'm going to be on these all these independent promotions is I can make it happen for myself finally. Because the most frustrating thing about being in WWE when you weren't being used is you had no other options. You're technically a free agent in the sense you're an independent contractor, but you can't really work anywhere else. And if they don't want you to work, you're not working. I mean, there were periods of time where I would go months without taking a single bump where I wasn't in the ring for for a minute. And you know, you can train and you can try and stay in shape and keep that ring rust off, but man, it, it really gets to your soul. So now I can say, and I'm proud of it because if I fail, I fail because of me. And if I, if I succeed, I succeed because of me. And I'm, I'm so content with that. I'm so happy and I'm so excited to be able to go out there and say, listen, for whatever happened in WWE, what you're about to see is who I really am, and you're about to get the, the most serious and real indicator of my talent. And if it goes great, phenomenal. If it doesn't, I'll fade off into the sunset, but at least I get to know it was based on my own talent. And, and um, that's kind of the, the thing that I want to emphasize is um, it's based on me. And, and, and however it goes, I'm happy that I was able to do my best. When it came down to the end with WWE, what was your reaction to that? 
when it when it came down to the end, it's it's not like I was super surprised. Um, I had heard that you know releases were happening, and um, when my time came, I actually missed the call because I was going through um, a dead zone picking up my youngest daughter from school. It was like a bad cell phone tower area. And uh, when I pulled in at home, I had gotten the message from the guy who was doing the firings and I was like, oh, there it is. And uh, I had already heard from Mansoor that he had gotten released. So um, I wasn't surprised, but uh, at the same time, every time something has ended for me, whether it be you know football or WWE, it's instantly become, all right, next step. How do we move forward? I got, you know, I got to keep this ship going. And um, so it became very exciting and fun and just diving right into it. It's been fun. I guess in a weird way, it kind of it was kind of better that maybe you kind of expected it where you said like you weren't as shocked because I feel like that kind of lessens the blow a little bit. And we have seen, you know, several different mass releases coming in and out. So I think that might always be kind of in the back of your mind of like, what if like, am I next type of thing? And when you're when you're kind of in the system and you're not a made entity, you know, um, every time that time comes around you're like oh six months has come up are they going to do a big release am i going to be on that um and it's something that you're kind of always got in the back of your mind which is you know a stress that isn't great <laughs> it's not a it's not a great feeling um now i don't have to worry about it anymore. <laughs> That's a wrap for this episode of The Latest. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. Do not forget to subscribe to the channel, hit that like button, and I'll catch you on the next vid.